Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Welsh Lover, in which right now I gotta talk about no worker will suffer. The struggle for better working conditions never ends. Great strides have been made during our term, but there's still a lot of room for improvement, namely the expansion of welfare and improved safety regulations. We progress more and more towards the establishment of a Welsh safety net. Which would be great, great, great. We've got some comments to go through as well. We're going to increase inflation, but whatever. We'll increase taxes anyways. As expected, our reforms have put a strain on our budget, and we're getting dangerously close to insolvency. The situation has laid bare this insuff insufficiency of our current tax rates and shows the necessity of increasing them. The an action will hurt our people, especially those of the upper class, but in time they'll understand that a society of sol solidarity requires sacrifices. They get quite a bit more political power, too. Oh, boy. But a sustainable economy, that's what we're shooting for. No longer are we at the mercy of mining. While far from total autarky, our economy is now strong enough to stand on its own two feet. With exports steadily increasing and imports of basic goods dropping dramatically. Still a lot to be done, but we have created the what we have created has grown to be a diverse, strong, healthy economy. And let's get some poverty will slowly improve as well. Increase trade laws. Inflation will decrease by a whole one percent. Interest rates will increase by one point five percent, which sucks. But we get more growth by one point five percent as well, which is actually not too bad. So let's go into this real quick while we have the political power. Maybe I won't speak so fast as well. Um, let's take a look see. So we're at 5.263 uh, billion in debt. Not good. Growth is 1.4%, which is going to go up even higher soon because we'll lower inflation and get more growth, hopefully. And we still have a yearly surplus, which is honestly really what I'm shooting the most for here. More surplus every year. More GDP every year. That's why we're doing... That's why I'm literally only doing the promote the idea of the nationalization as well as nationalized industrial factories. Because increasing a state GDP by half a billion is just really strong. It does hurt a gr uh, growth and national debt. Yeah, I get it, but... Like, we get a lot of uh, increases, which is really great. Look up a comment included. Interested to see how the Welsh will survive the English onslaught. Otherwise, I enjoyed the video. And someone replied to that comment saying, They didn't. In fact, in the next update, the next major update for Old World... Not World Blues. Oh my gosh. The next major update for TNO, Wales is getting removed. That's why we're playing them now. A sewage union fears. The Aberfan disaster traumatized our nation and prejudiced against it against coal mining. And the unions are no exception. In memory of the innocents who perished that terrible morning still burn bright in the memory of the unionized workers. And a lot of work will be required to calm the fears of another Aberfan. Work we are, of course, willing to do. <clears throat> another comment from yesterday's video was, uh, let's see, I don't know if the 1984 Redux mod is still work, being worked on, but if you could, could you do a playthrough of that? I've, never, I've not heard of that, actually. 1984 Redux? Sounds like fun. Maybe. Hey, we'll see. Never know. And we're currently at 53%. A little under 53%. Also, poverty is getting better, which is also very, 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 very good. Wow, you're really plus of 0.64. That growth is really bad, but whatever. A sustainable economy is all I care about right now. <clears throat> so, someone else says, Can you do a playthrough of Old World Blues Eagle Rock submod? I probably can, and I've already, probably already thought about it. There's, there's a few submods I've not touched yet that I really want to touch and, and you know play through, but I just haven't had time to. So, yeah, that'd be good. To try, so basically, it should increase roughly 2.5%, right? Oh, more growth, good. Better better inflation. Nice, nice, nice. And your response is still not bad. Convincing Parliament. Well, if the workers on our side, all that's left now is persuading the assembly to support our plan. Neither said than done. We're looking to mostly count on the votes of the left, but Plague Comri is likely to oppose us. However, we're certain that they will fold in time. Nobody wants to be remembered as the man who brought about the second Aberfan, after all. We'll lose political power again. God dang it. Um, it's not always great to do this, because we do lower GDP growth and stability, but that's for our, all these anyways as well, so. Oh, well. More output, please. Anti-tank, which, or I guess anti-air, really. Uh, let's get some more defense, and, or at least breakthrough and soft attack. That'd be good. As we do have a cup of green tea here, keeping us nice and warm. Because we can. The Christmas War. Not bad. More growth. Or I guess, I guess technically this is, technically, less growth. But more surplus, because we have a higher GDP anyways. 5.386 every year, huh? Threading the non-believers. No voice left behind. I don't want to hurt the other voices, so we'll probably go with no voice left behind. So if you want to read about threading the non-believers, please go right ahead. But Hey, we'll see. We have 50 army XP, too. Not bad. Not bad. Convince Parliament. No voice left behind. Well, we could threaten the dissidents to bring them back behind party lines by force. Such a solution uh, will be undemocratic and counterproductive. Instead, we should start a unity campaign, calling for all Welsh patriots in the assembly to support the plan. Well, it not only build, uh, not only spare us from inner party conflict, but also build long-lasting parliamentary support. A united left? For the first time in Welsh history, the parliamentary left is strongly united. Our representatives, supported by smaller leftist groups, have achieved a major or majority strong enough to pass the coal plan and secure a future of safe, sustainable coal mining in Wales. Nice. Someone said, uh, so basically, I gave in 
to whoever spam is the comment of playing Sock Dem Whales? Pretty much. So, and that was two or three times. Someone else says, White and green I dress, a dragon in my chest. Someone else says, Oh, Sock Dem, the most lame ideology in the world. I would prefer the ultra nationalist whales. Yeah, it's fun to be a radical. It's a lot more fun to be a radical. Oh, IRA steps down, huh? And then, you know, I left, of course, I'm about preparing for the election. With the economic campaign over, the political campaign begins. The tools of this trade aren't hammers and sickles, but posters and leaflets. The workplaces are not factories and farms, but party offices, meeting halls, and the streets themselves. Let every Welshman know what the government has done for him. Which sure seems like a pretty good thing to do. But we'll go with no voice left behind. We're shooting for less than 20% uh, unemployment. Or at least poverty. Not unemployment, but poverty. And then, preparing for the election, then restoring our diplomatic reputation. Ever since our independence, we uh, were alone, closed off from allies, surrounded by wolves, waiting for a moment of weakness. We kept to ourselves and expected others to follow suit. There's no way to conduct a modern diplomatic policy. We must reach out to our neighbors and potential friends from across the sea, lest we die alone and forgotten. Not the result we hoped for. A poster in every street corner, a speech in every radio, a newsreel in every theater show, the tried and tested methods of propaganda, both consciously and unconsciously, swaying public opinion towards a certain direction. In this case, that direction is simple. The government needs... <clears throat> Uh, popular support amongst the people. On paper, these methods would gather support by bombarding the populace with pro-government messages, so wherever they go, there'll always be some sort of propaganda. In practice, however, it's a completely different question. Amherst Thomas, uh, sighs heavily, looking over the reports uh, to go to desk. It seems like the Welsh psyche is much more resistant than his advisors for thought. Rather than convincing the people to lend their support to the government, it appears that this massive propaganda effort has expanded itself to no avail. Perhaps a different approach is needed, but, you know, it is what it is. We're made in Wales, though. And also, I did uh, do temp attack cut, which I didn't know. It actually gives us 20 political power, which is actually really cool. It gives us slightly more growth, um, but it does reduce 15% of our total income. But, you know, whatever. I just wanted to... I just never knew that it would give us actually more political power, which is kind of radical. Kind of nice, too. Of course, we're ready for the election. Looking overseas? Um, sure, the land's... Overseas house some of the latest holdouts of freedom and democracy in the world, waiting, gathering their strength, they look for opportunities to strike against fascism. That's all they portray in the welfare propaganda, at least. We have no delusions, we know that life in the free world isn't free of discrimination, poverty, or violence, but we have no one else to turn to, so. And the Isles, of course, overlooking the seas. Nice. Ready for the election. Well, gentlemen, the moment's almost upon us. It's been a rough couple months, the party side uh, faced hardships, uh, toil and trouble. If ever the party would have been shattered and fallen, it would have, it would have been them. With a the come go. Party has pulled through, passing reform after reform in the hopes of dreams of better Wales. They have rode through the coal crisis and improved their lives of Welsh workers to levels previously unheard of. It's now time for the elections where the party will find out whether or not their actions have been appreciated by the Welsh people. To the ballot! Oh, and some lag because we're auto saving. To May 1st. Actually, promote the idea of nationalization. Oh! Wait, what? Oh, is that it? That's not it. No. We're at 56%. Wait, how's that, how's that it? We still have all this tree to do over here. Oh, and what about England trying to beat the snot out of us? The snot. Well, they gotta be preparing for the worst anyways. Whoa! Okay, arcade mode, that makes sense, yeah. Place free milk taps in every corner in Uruguay. Summon the Hoth. Well, okay. Mm hmm. Well. Okay. Very odd, but sure, why not? And that's the story of Wales, my friends. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day. No, we're not done yet. We're going to keep going on and go through all these focuses first. And see when the English really do attack us and try to kill us off. Oh, there goes our peepee. -pee. I hate it when we lose our peepee. -pee. So we're looking overseas. Remember the Empire? What has the Empire ever done for us? It is all done as expo exploited people, all in the name of a monarch descended from the royals of old who led their armies against us. Now, however, with the Empire gone, we can establish diplomatic relations with its former dominions. This time as equals. Of course, on the Isles. Yeah. The most important step is interacting with those the closest to us, but they may be our best allies or worst foes. We cannot know which, which are which until we establish relations with them, of course. Mission the U.S. of A. Ever since the Second World War, the United States has taken itself upon taken upon itself the mount of the leader of the free world. Peculiar free role, especially considering the discrimination of blacks or the support of terrorists and authoritarians, but the commitment to fighting fascism is unquestionable. Cordial diplomatic relations with the world's most super, most powerful democracy would serve us quite well. Request American guns? Designs? The ever-expanding American military-industrial complex, despite its liking for proxy wars and overpriced products, does produce some of the finest military equipment in the world. Using our newly acquired goodwill with the Americans, we could request a transfer some of their designs to us, or to use for domestic production. 
Then it will be cutting edge, but it might be better or it might be useful for upgrading our aging equipment. That's very true. And getting all this stuff is just preparing for the war with against the English. They're just going to run us over, I'll be honest. I can't imagine us holding out, especially with only two divisions, so. Looking overseas. On the Isles. It's been many months. The IRC, the Welsh government as a whole, has been working tirelessly day and night. Working towards this moment. Finally, the economy is ready. Reforms and regulations, laws and legislation to open up the economy, and through that, the country, now ever is tireless, must address the nation. Now look at this. To the people of Wales, I must thank you for all your support through this process. It's not been easy, but now we stand in the midst of your achievement. Wales now ready to be part of the world economy, to be open to all the world for greater prosperity for all both at home and abroad. Once again, to the people of Wales, this could not have been done without you. And to the people of the world, be you immigrants seeking jobs, you're a corporation seeking uh, investment options, I say to you on behalf of this nation and its people, auto-saving. Welcome to Wales. Nice. More growth? <sighs> we love the growth. 5.8 is not good, but 11 billion in GDP, that's pretty, that's pretty schnazzy. Friends in the British Isles. Talks with Scotland. Scotland is a brother, beacon of democracy on the island, drowned in fascism. We share a common interest, namely defense against the Germans, the, the British, and the preservation of democracy, which should make negotiations relatively easy. Should. Talks with Ireland. Ireland, a fellow Celtic nation, has long suffered under the yoke of the British. Partnership with us is in their best interest. Sadly, that our past association with the Germans and the Fine Finales, similarity to the Plaid Cymru, may cast a shadow on negotiations. Well, may. Watching the border. The English have emerged from the Civil War a stronger nation. It would be foolish to assume their stance towards us is anything but hostile. It would seem that the imperialist habits die hard. Yet, another subjugation would be disastrous for, to our people. A surprise attack would spell the end of our, uh... Oh, crap. Yeah, my bad. Uh, independence. We must watch the marches. Friends of the British Isles. Near the center of Dublin stands a tall building. A building that seems like any other government building. Large and modern. A passerby may not remark or on or even notice any sort of difference between this building and the many buildings surrounding it. We're not for a few rather major differences. Heightened security with guards bearing the obvious look and bearing the wary foreigners in a strange land. Barred windows and reinforced doors. The most prominent and obvious of all signs. A flag. The Welsh dragon flying high and proud above the building. This building is none other than the Welsh Embassy in Dublin, part of the Welsh government's program of outreach in the Isles in an attempt to foster cooperation towards the peripheral countries of the British Isles to Celtic solidarity. The Americans accept. So, well, the Americans have responded to our purchasing requests. It's turned out a lot better than we expected, maybe as good as we hoped. The Americans have agreed to a deal we proposed to them, and the weapons we have purchased are well on the way to our armories. We should hope that they are never needed, but hope alone is no defense, especially not in this uncaring world order. Much better would have hope in a large arsenal. Speak softly and carry a giant stick. Preparing for the worst. The relations have been secured, our army improved with the help of the Americans, and the march is garrisoned. We'll never be entirely ready for what has come, but extensive preparations just might save us. When Englishmen come, they'll be ready or be in for an unpleasant surprise. Uh, men of Harlech, stand you ready or steady. A matter of military importance, and you will know the Welsh military is inadequate to defend properly against any threats as we face, especially the English menace as such. It will be within the best interest of the Welsh nation to fund and arm two more divisions for the army in order to secure security, ensure security and sovereignty in the light of the recent events in England. Emmer's Thomas had quite enough of the military's mil uh, convoluted request for increased funding, increased weapons, increased manpower, but maybe this time, as Jonas have a point, Europe is a chaotic and dangerous place and these are uncertain times. Um, any sort of extra defense would be very welcome, however, such defenses are no, by no means free and the money and other resources required could most definitely find good use elsewhere. Mobilize the reserves. Oh, we can't afford it. Oh, whoops, my fingers up. We can't afford it. Um, so that's the end of the focus tree. That's the end of it. I mean, it, the English are going to attack eventually, so I guess we'll see in just a little bit what a feature shall hold with uh, these. Oh, goodness. Fine, fine folks. The Coal Act. Oh, God. Our biggest threat and necessity. What a feature holds. Back in business to overconference. Cash out of Great Britain. Huh. Reveal our motive. Does not exist. Cash out. Huh. Coal. Well, the people's PM? I guess we'll see. We'll probably not do well, but we'll see. English demands. And letters arrived in Cardiff from across the eastern border. It is from the English government, and they've been demanding that we begin the unification process. It's not been an unexpected moment yet. It's one that we would rather have avoided. The English army is ready to enforce their demands, and therefore. The government will have to think carefully before they make up their mind. Many have already accepted that the dreams of an independent Welsh Republic is over, and that we will soon awaken to the new English reality. To decline would mean it's suicide, but the government will have to do what's best for the people of Wales. We will be forever? Ah, that's more than an ultra-nationalist one we should take. But we have no choice. We have no choice. Emrys... Emrys Thomas has given up already. And alright. I did not take long for the English to send their negotiations over to Cardiff. Their enthusiasm was even seen as vulgar as some. But little could be done to stop them now. It was obvious that the English were now entirely in control of what followed from here on out. The flash of a camera captured the moment. The Welsh did their best to look as optimistic as they could. The unfortunate truth was that some of them had regrets even as they entered their negotiation room. 
Even Margaret Thatcher momentarily let this facade drop. But for a little longer than a second, fearing that the English Prime Minister might have caught him, no matter he thought, it would not have changed much if, even if they had. Let's get on with it. Set the tone. Negotiations with the English got off to an acceptable start, but the English felt like the Welsh had to be reminded of who was in control. A demand would have to be made, and Wales would have to, in turn, to accept it. The target of the order would be the Welsh army. The English suspected it would still be a hotbed for nationalist activity, which would inevitably have to be removed uh, once a calm unification anyway. Thus, Welsh demilitarization became the first key issue of the negotiations. The Welsh delegation was also reminded that they refused, and further actions would be off limits, and the Wales would have to suffer the consequences. They would not de if they would not demilitarize, the English would be more than happy to do it for them. Come and take it. We'll give them everything we want, because we're sock dims. We're not going to put out too much of a fight, because we probably won't be able to afford it. Surrounding our markets. Next on the English agenda came the need to integrate the Welsh economy into England. Such a change could actually become a benefit of our people for Wales, and would welcome an influx of English goods. But many smaller Welsh businesses would be simply put at risk of, sim of being outcompeted by the English counterparts. Unemployment in the region would rise substantially, something that would take a great deal of time to recover from. In a few of the English demands, we would again risk war, but without an army, how could such a battle be fought? Time is running out, and the Crown will soon seize total control, and there's increasingly little that can be done to stop it. We all make our demands. By this point in the negotiations, the Welsh were sick of accepting the demands of the English. They had acted in good faith, but where did that led them now? Now, Wales was without an army and an economy which was slowly dying before its eyes. Things could not go on this way forever. Wales would have to stand up for itself. They would request that Wales be granted autonomy, yet remain underneath the English crown. Some thought it foolish to make a stand against the English so late. However, the demands had already been sent. There was nothing left to do besides wait and hope that whatever limited sympathies the English had for Wales allowed them to accept their offer. The last hope of Wales. Expo 67, I remember when that mod first came out, or the update came out, and that was kind of crazy. And they refused autonomy. The English reply was the opposite of what the Welsh government had been hoping for. Their suggestion of the English granting Wales some autonomy had been rejected, and the future of Wales had become exceedingly uncertain. Yet, the likely result of Welsh autonomy would be a continued deterioration of the situation, as talks between the two nations would probably break down. What was worse is the reports that they've already started to emerge, suggesting that the English had doubled down on the rejection and sent in their army to finalize the unification. The Welsh government can at least be sure that it tried its best to do what was best for Wales, yet in doing so, it may have lost everything to war. Well, we're dead. But, I mean, honestly, I mean, what, what, what were we expecting? Let's just spend more money. Or wait to nationalize industries. Oh, no. Even these... Oh, they attack. News of an English invasion has been anticipated. At the moment after the rejection of the demand has been sent, there's been very little time to prepare, and only limited defenses exist to protect the nation. The English soldiers march forward, and conflict is now inevitable. No one wished that it would become to this, but the final moments of the Welsh nation are upon us. The Welsh now have a choice between death or acceptance, as they all know that the English army is much more vast than that of Wales. If you expect Wales to last much longer, but at least it will not go quietly. And we're dead. My friends, it has been... A journey with you. Oh, now we're seeing, it, we're seeing all the Germans, guys. But if you enjoy the campaign as Wales, one of the last times we'll probably see, honestly, Wales and TNO before they get absorbed into England at the start. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.